What if your customers are trying to find your business online, but instead of finding you, they find your competitors? Now, more than ever, it's time to make sure you have the right SEO to make your business stand out online. Welcome to Go Mind Your Business with Terry Bork. Presented by Extreme Marketing Concepts, putting your business in front of the hungry herd of buyers who are looking for you right now. Extreme Marketing Concepts, helping you drive more traffic, dominate the market, and crush your competition. And now, here's Terry. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Go Mind Your Business. My name is Terry Bork, and I am super, super excited to be with you guys today. I have a very amazing guest. Her name is Kelly McCausey, and she is a solopreneur and the founder of Solo Smarts. Welcome to our program today, Kelly. Thank you. Hi, Terry. Hey, Kelly. Why don't you share a little bit of us uh, with us about who you are and how you got started becoming a solopreneur. Sure. Well, hi everybody. Um, I'm a blogger, podcaster, information marketer, affiliate marketer, and a business coach. And I got my start back in 2002 doing web design, graphics, and, and things like that for people just to make some extra money to pay the bills. And that brought me into the work at home mom community where I ended up starting a podcast and then about three years ago I realized that the work at home mom world wasn't mine anymore my son grew up and moved out of the house and I had a little identity crisis where I had to decide well who am I if I'm not a work at home mom and I, I arrived on the word solopreneur I, I the word entrepreneur is great but that seems to kind of encompass all kinds of businesses people who are starting businesses and I feel like I don't have a lot in common with say the guy who's opening up a Quiznos down the road so much as I do with other individual solopreneurs who are building a business that they can run on their own something light and tight and and easily turnable so um, solo smarts was born at that time and it, it feels good I love it love what I do <laughs> awesome thanks Kelly so I wanted to really get on today and really talk to you about content curation and really getting eyeballs onto your content we work so hard with our content and you know why is content curation so important to achieving greater success online well content curation is the perfect complement to content creation most of us know we need to create content write blog posts create videos uh, you know post interesting stuff on social media but there's a lot of fantastic content that already exists on the internet especially when you look around your own niche your own business community you find lots of great content you know my niche is solopreneurs but solopreneurs need to blog so I could spend a lot of time creating content about blogging or I could curate it. I could go out into the blogging world and find the best content and share it with my people. Specifically identifying content that a solopreneur will appreciate. So um, I'm not going to curate a blogging article about uh, teaching your staff how to blog. Um, solopreneurs don't have staff but I am going to go out and find blogging articles that talk about blogging when you have limited time which is is so perfect for a solopreneur so I go out and curate the best content sharing the links on my site 
uh, as as little snippet posts linking back to the original content. That's my chosen form of curation. And so it complements my own content and serves my market really well. I got it. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for helping me understand the difference really between, you know, writing blog articles and, and curating stuff. It's very really important to know and such a time saver. Yep, it is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> and and the person whose content you're curating, you know, they're getting that additional exposure as well as you're giving maybe your opinion to it. Yes. Yes. Right? Yep. So it's a win win for everybody. That's fantastic. Yep. Cool. So how do um, your students or, or new people typically get started with content curation? Well, uh, they just have to decide what do they want to curate? Um, what do their people need? It's, it's that simple. Um, as, assuming they already have a blog that they're sharing content on, I recommend that you just add a new category to your blog specifically for curation and then begin to collect the content. Now I have some of my, I have favorite sources of content. I use a website called Feedly, mm -hmm. F-E-E dot F-E-E-D dot L-Y, Feedly is an RSS reader. So when I find blogs that I love, I subscribe to them with the RSS feed over at Feedly. Then when I'm ready, I am able to go scan through the feeds, read the headlines, and explore the content I'm interested in. And that's primarily where I find content that I'm going to curate. Sometimes I find content just spontaneously, something that someone else shares in social media. I think I really need to share that with my people, but mostly through Feedly. You might wonder, if you find a blog you love, why aren't you subscribing to their emails? Because I don't, I don't give my email address up easily, and I don't really want people being able to push out messages to me on their time frame. What I like about subscribing by RSS is that it's I decide when I'm going to go review the posts. They're not being pushed out at me. I'm deciding. So it's it's about being in control of my time and my inbox. But so you just you you identify your favorite sources, you subscribe to them, you monitor them and and then you add the posts when you're ready. Oh, fantastic. Awesome. So let me ask you, Kelly, if our listeners were to get started today with curating content, what would their business life look like, say, in 30 days or 90 days from now, even three years from now? Well, <laughs> it, it's, it's, I'll tell you what, there are a couple of pretty amazing benefits that come from curation, and one of them you already touched on the people you're curating notice it. Most people, if they're, especially if they're using a WordPress blog, when you write ab about them and link to them, if your blog is set up to do so, you send what's called a track back. It's a little ping back to their site that says someone has linked to you. If they're receiving trackbacks, if they're if they are accepting them, then they know you linked to them. And if and even really successful bloggers often pay attention and go check those trackbacks and see, you know, wh what have they said about me? And I've made some really cool friends that way. Is there someone in your community you'd really like to have a relationship with? Is there is there someone pretty powerful that you hope maybe you could guest blog for them someday or interview them on your podcast? You are probably engaging with them and liking them on Facebook and leaving comments on their blog. But take it a step farther and curate them. They notice that, that you took the time to not just comment and like, but link to them and say something 
uh, thoughtful about their content, recommending it to your people. They notice that. They thank you for it. Many of them do, not all. But it takes your relationship to the next level as far as, as they, they're noticing you. They're more likely to remember you. And, and this has already borne fruit for me in my business. So that, that's one of the things you can look forward to if you adopt a curation strategy. Another thing is obviously traffic. Terry, I, I want to tell your listeners right now, you already curate every single person listening to this, watching this. You already curate. I know you do. Have you ever shared a link on Facebook? Have you ever shared a link on Twitter? Have you ever hit retreat or share? You curated. You shared content you think your followers will like. But here's the thing. When you share a link on Facebook, like Terry, right now, if you go like a post on my site or, or share it on Facebook, a bunch of people are going to see it. And if they fall in love with it and want to talk about it later or share it later or go look for it, they're going to have a hard time finding it on Facebook. Uh, or, or if they do like it and talk about it, how many times have you heard someone say, um, there's this really cool article I found on Facebook and it talked about this. I don't really remember who shared it with me. <laughs> we all have said that. If you do what I'm doing, if you take that extra few minutes and post it on your site with a little blurb of text, publish it, now take that link to Facebook and Twitter and share it. Now they have to click through your house to get to the content. Now when they remember, I found this really cool article Terry shared with me. I found it on her site. Uh, they're going to remember. They're going to know where to go back and look for it. That brings you traffic and brand recognition. That's another big benefit of, of adopting this kind of a strategy. really great information there on how you can get people to recognize your brand and know where that content is coming from. Awesome. So make sure you do that guys because that was an amazing tidbit that Kelly just dropped <laughs> off in there. Kelly, how about roadblocks? Are there typically roadblocks that people run into when they're just starting to get started in curating things? Probably identifying uh, sources to find content to curate. If you have a tight niche, it could be challenging. But the, the first thing I say is um, while, while we want to be consistent with curation, we don't want to set like wild goals like I will share 10 items every week. You don't know if you're going to find 10 items that are share worthy. So while you are pursuing consistency, don't feel like you have to go crazy. Um, I mentioned subscribing to my favorite blogs, but there are lots of other ways to seek out content to curate. Um, one, one of the things I have done in the past in order to find content on a particular topic is um, I go to, this is kind of old school, but I go to easing articles and I search my topic there to find out who has written articles about it. Now, easing articles is not such a hot property, and these days people are not article marketing the same way, but there are existing experts there, and what you just want to do is you just want to find them and then go find their sites and, you know, subscribe to their RSS feeds there. There are um, other article directories. There are other blog directories. You can ask around. You can monitor. You can go into iTunes and search the directory there to find people who have podcasts. While you're there, you'll obviously also find books and audiobooks on the same topic. And then, of course, jump on over to Amazon.com and look for people who are writing on the content, people who have published Kindle books, and then Google them to find their sites. 
uh, use Google itself to just seek out the content um, and and just identify as many sources as possible. If you're busy, this is something that you can easily outsource to a virtual assistant. Just have them go do that footwork for you. Mm. Really great strategies shared there too. Um, let me ask you this, um, physical action steps maybe that people can take to, to get started with curating. Physical action steps. Mm. Oh. I'm a step kind of girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, step one, decide what you want to curate. Step two, begin to identify sources. Uh, step three, something, a little thing that I teach is to have a image that you use on all of your curated items. So it's kind of a visual cue to your people. I have a little alarm clock. Mm -hmm. And it says solopreneur quickies. I'm training my market that when I share content that has this little alarm clock on it, that it's something they're going to be able to check out quickly. I'm, you know, I'm not linking to books. I'm, you know, I'm linking to a quick asset that they can take in and explore, and and so that differentiates from the rest of my content. Um, so, so create a little visual cue that goes with your content. Uh, I do that partly to teach my people that this is what curation looks like, but also because every item you share on social media, you really need to have an image to go with it. And I just don't want you to feel like you have to create a custom image for every little item you curate. Because if it takes a lot of time, you won't do it. If you curate like I'm doing it, you're talking five minutes tops uh, to, to write a little blurb and hit publish and share that stinker. So, um, and then one more step beyond that, once you've shared it on social media, share it through your emails. I don't mean write an email every time you curate something, uh, but maybe include them as little PS items on existing emails or if you do have a newsletter you can add a section of curated content and just link to your to the page on your site. I do a Friday email. I call it Friday Newsy Bits and my curated items are the bits that I share. Wonderful. Okay, that really helps lay out a, a nice process for people to go through and, and follow and really have an action guide that they will be able to follow and, and folks will be able to find that in our notes uh, after after the show. So that's a wonderful tip. Thank you. Great. Now I know, Kelly, you've got an awesome event coming up in the middle of May of 2014. Tell us a little bit about your event, who's coming, why somebody <laughs> should go. I am hosting my first ever multi-speaker event in Toronto, Canada, May 16th, 17th, and 18th. It's called Exposure and Profit, and it's all about content marketing. And, um, you know, we engage in content marketing because we have a message to share whether that's a message of content or a message about what your product can do for them or what your service can do for them, you have a message. And um, I am so excited about my event. I have these little pins made up. Um, is this going to be backwards? Uh, no, I, I hold it back up there again. Oh, when I stop talking, let me let okay. me go over there one second. There we go. Your message matters to me. All of my speakers and my staff are wearing that pin. Um, your message matters to us, and um, all of the name tags. I've a I'm going to ask people to share. You know what they have a message about so that as they meet other people you know they'll be able to to know you know who they are what they're doing um, I have well I just want to have an event 
<laughs> I love live events. I I have hosted a virtual community for almost 10 years now at Solo Masterminds. I want to take it to to the in-person experience and content marketing just seemed like the perfect topic because that's basically what I teach about in all of my different courses. Um, I have experts coming. Um, Daryl Eves is coming to teach video marketing and teach about YouTube. I have Alice Seba teaching about email marketing. I have Connie Reagan Green. She's going to be talk about self-publishing uh, to get your message out. I have um, Justin Popovich and Nicole Dean coming with keynotes. It's their job to motivate and inspire you. And uh, and my other speakers are coming to just teach you the tactics and the strategies to get your message out there. We're having an awesome mastermind on Friday. I have Dan Morris from Blogging Concentrated and Ronnie Nijma from PLR.me coming. They're going to be advising as well as many of my speakers will be there advising too. It's going to be such a great time. I want to welcome people. I want them. I want them to feel welcome, valued. I want to inspire and motivate them that they really do have a message to get out there. And then I want to teach them exactly how to do it. Send them home with a game plan. Can't wait. Oh, it sounds like it's going to be amazing. And you know, guys, the one thing that I truly, truly love about Kelly is that you don't need to know one person at the event because you will go there by yourself and then you will meet a family and one of the things that um, I found when I first met Kelly is that um, you know we, we're all like really shy when we are all like by <laughs> ourselves and we're all kind of uncomfortable in that kind of a situation and a hello goes really really far and you don't you're not made to feel like an outsider you're truly welcomed into the fold if you will and uh, it's something that really helped work for me it made me want to go to additional events I don't like going to events by myself um, sometimes I, I drag people <laughs> with me um, but knowing you know you're going a little farther maybe away from where you typically would go further away from home don't feel uncomfortable not knowing somebody because the event is truly geared for onesies if you will yeah. and, and then you will meet a whole bunch of people yeah it I'm designing are you familiar with introverts and extroverts mm-hmm yes which are you um I'm like an adapted extrovert <laughs> I, I really am not an extrovert at all however I've acquired the taste, otherwise I don't won't need anybody. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Well, that's common of introverts. Introverts, us, if you know, they have adapted. They, a lot of people who are truly introverts are mistaken to be extroverts when they're in public because they've learned how to flick that switch and and be social. Um, I'm an I'm an ambivert. Mm, what's the I, ambivert? Uh, both. I can go both ways. Okay. Um, ambidextrous is when you can write with both hands. I'm an ambivert. I like, I can do alone really well. I love working at home here in my home office. I don't feel lonely. And, and when I'm out at an event, I'm happy there too. Now, I'm not wild about really big groups of people. That's not my favorite way to socialize. And my personality type doesn't do small talk very well so I can I can struggle for other reasons but I but I still really enjoy the events I don't get exhausted by them like a true introvert would but many of my friends are are introverts and so I designed mine event to specifically be introvert friendly if you're an introvert and you've never been to a live event because it's just makes just makes you feel very very out of your depth not from a professional point of view but just from a personal comfort point of view 
my event is a great place to get your feet wet because I've promised I will never put you on the spot. I will never stick a mic in your face and shine a light on you if you haven't volunteered for it. You don't even, you can ask questions without actually asking them. I mean, everything is set up to make you feel as comfortable as you are and let you decide how far you want to put yourself out there. That was very important to me for this event. And um, I'm really excited about seeing it all get into action. Oh, that's phenomenal. And I hope that your event is amazing and is the first of many successful events to come. And I know that your guests are truly going to find tremendous value when it comes to any of the topics that you're going to be sharing with them over the weekend. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. The content is going to rock. And yes, I will be making recordings available. Um, you know, the weekend of the event and after, people will be able to order replays of the audios of each of the sessions. We're going to record everything, except for the private masterminds, of course. Awesome. Great. Now, Kelly, for folks who want to really take some time separate from the event um, to learn about curating their content, I know as a coach you have an amazing program out there that people can um, learn from home. Yeah. Um, can you share a little bit a little bit about us about your cur curation marketing product? Sure. Content sure. Product, excuse me. Uh, it's called Smart Curation Skills and it goes into greater detail on the things that I shared earlier on this hangout, the steps of curation. But what we talked about is really only one form of curation that I practice. I practice curation um, in three forms. The other, there's another form where you curate content on another site, and there's a form of then then there's getting your content curated on someone else's site. That's a whole other part of the picture that needs to be implemented in order to to really um, rock your business, rock your content marketing. Just as awesome as it is for you to share other people's content, it, it's pretty darn cool when people share yours. And I teach all of that in the course. Okay, fantastic. Now, for those of you who are interested, I've put the link right here, right below, and you can find Kelly's course at terrybork.com forward slash Kelly, and you'll get to learn all about what Kelly is sharing in her content curation course. Now, um, anything else that you can share about your course? I know it's really reasonably priced. It's ridiculously priced, actually, mm -hmm. for all of the nuggets that you drop inside. Um, the thing I want to make sure you guys know is that you can do this. I, I spoke on curation this past February at NAMS, uh, the niche novice to advance marketing system. Uh, Terry, you were at that event in Atlanta. Yes. And I spoke in the 100 room, which is the room for newcomers. And sometimes when I teach, I often teach podcasting because it's a often requested topic for me. Often when I teach on podcasting, I see I, I is getting this big you know, all across the room as they ask themselves, can I do this? You know, it sounds so technical. They just get that, just get overwhelmed. Well, when I taught on curation, I saw people going, I can do that. I totally get it. I immediately see how this can work. And I hope that's how you felt, you know, as we talked about it today. There's nothing complicated about this. Nothing. My course just shows you what I do and gives you tips, you know, but it, it's just not rocket science. It doesn't matter how new you are to the game of online marketing and content creation. Curation is a tactic anybody can pick up and implement. Bam, today. You could be doing it today. So go for it. 
That was awesome. And you know, I I was in the 100 classroom um, with Kelly when we were over at NAMS, and I learned so many new tricks and <laughs> tips that I could apply to my business that I never even thought about. So um, if and if I can do it, because I'm not always you know savvy. I know what y'all think, but you know sometimes things just go woo right over my head. <laughs> this is actually a program that I'm able to implement and follow, and I don't have to get all the experts in to to help me out with. I can I can pretty much you know just just you know learn and go, learn and apply. And that's really all, all that um, that it is. And, and Kelly really lays it out really well. And again, you can find that at terrybork.com forward slash Kelly and learn all about that. You yeah. Know. You you snuck into the 100 room. You, did, <laughs> you you're not you're not a newbie. Uh, and when I say newbie, it's not a dirty word. Just so you know, I I know some people say that, but Terry, you. You certainly didn't belong in the 100 room, but it was nice to have you there. You know, I, I think every once in a while, everybody belongs in the 100 room. <laughs> we get reminded of skills. Sometimes we could get sloppy, and it's good to know, oh, I skipped that step, and it's a lot of those are vitally important steps to really yeah. you know, grow and explode your business. So, you know, and, and it never hurts, you know, Kelly is one of my favorite people, and I've learned so much on online from her. And just being able to be in the classroom where she was teaching a course, you know, it, it you know just gave me additional tools and tricks that I wasn't applying. So the number, you know, a, a basic course or a, an advanced or a super extreme expert course, it doesn't matter. I I just really wanted to hear you speak and learn from you. Oh, I'm honored. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. So again, guys, that link for Kelly is terrybork.com forward slash Kelly. You can get this amazing course that she offers. You'll also um, be able to go look at her event, learn more about exposure and profits for your business, which is great, and learn all about other amazing courses that Kelly offers. So it's been wonderful. So, Kelly, any final words that you would like to share today before we end our, our um, session together? Well, thank you, Terry, for having me. I, you, you're one of my favorite people, too. We, my, my friend Tish and I were just talking about that before, that we like you so much. Um, you. you know, so glad I got to meet you last year in, in Orlando and that you came to Atlanta and look forward to seeing you again. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone else, thanks for spending time with us. I enjoyed this. Oh, awesome. I really enjoyed it too, guys. And again, terrybork.com forward slash Kelly. Let's get some curated content out there. Let's really explode our businesses this year. And one more time, thank you so much, uh, Kelly, for joining us. And you know what, guys? Until next time, go mind your business. <laughs> and have a great day. <laughs>